Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video we'll be test driving one of the best selling PowerPoint templates on Graphic River, Corporate Business PowerPoint Presentation, and I will share with you what's awesome about this template and what could be better. So let's go! Alright, so let's jump to graphicriver.net, one of the biggest places to find PowerPoint templates. Let's go to all PowerPoint templates, let's make sure we're looking at the best sellers. Now let's scroll down a little bit and let's make sure that we look for templates added in the last year, that's good. Ok, and in the first place we can see the corporate business PowerPoint presentation and this is the template that we will be test driving in today's video. So it was created by Be Creative. Ok, and now we can look through this landing page and let's see what kind of information we can get. And right away I can see that this uh, PowerPoint template has dark version and light version, so that's awesome. Next we have some infographics and a few more updates. That's good. And here at the bottom we can see all of the key features, so we can expect to find 260 unique slides. That's good. Ok, so I have already bought this template and let's open it up and let's see what we can find inside. So dark and light versions, product manual and inside the light version folder we can see a lot of pptx and ppt files. So basically we have 4 pptx files. That's awesome. So we have corporate presentation, infographics, pitch deck and proposal. So let's start with the corporate presentation and here we have 103 slides. Ok, and as always let's jump to a slide sorter view, this is my favorite way to get a first impression when I open up a new template. And right away I can see that we have a nice clean corporate slide design, so that's good. Let's scroll down. As you can see we have this blue accent color, later on we will test it out if it's easy to change this color. I can see some device mockups and some icons, so that's good. Alright, we have some break slides and here I see a question mark, so later on we will check what's uh, happening with that question mark. And here at the bottom I can see some icons, so let's check if those icons are vector icons, not just simple pictures. Let's increase the size of this microphone and it's still looking sharp, so that's vector icons, that's good. We can change the fill color if we want. However, I cannot edit the points, but as long as these are vector icons, everything is good. Alright, so let's jump to the first slide and the next thing I would like to check is the slide size. By default, PowerPoint creates uh, slides with a resolution of 720p and in this case I can see that the slide size is super huge and we have a resolution of 1440p, which is good if you would like to export your slides as high quality images. Alright, and now let's just play the presentation and let's see what's happening on the full screen. So currently the slides are looking a little bit empty because we haven't added any images yet. And another thing I can notice is that all of these slides are set to auto transition. And I think this auto transition feature might be a little bit confusing to new users. So if you'd like to disable it just go to slide transition and uncheck this checkbox after. And you can apply this to all. Now none of the slides will have the auto transition. You will decide when you want to transition to the next slide. Alright, and feel free to choose any other transition that you want from the transition panel. Uh, right now all of the slides are set to push transition, so you could use something more subtle such as fade if you'd like to. Alright, so now let's test picture placeholders, let's see if it's easy to work with them. We can open up the selection pane so that we can better see where these picture placeholders are located. And here on the first slide we can see that this picture placeholder is on top. So we can click this image icon and we can select any picture that we want or we can just open up the folder with photos, select any photo that we want and just drag it and drop it. And now all that's left to do is to send this picture to back so that it's behind the rest of the shapes. Alright, so I would say that image placeholders are working fine in this template, so that's good. And we should be able to edit all of these text boxes that we see on this slide, so let me quickly check that. Alright, so all of these are basically just text boxes and we can insert our own text, so that's good. 
And I think we could test out a few more of these image placeholders in other slides. So for the slide number two, let's drag and drop another picture. Let's check it out on the full screen. All right, and here on the left side, I can see a small white line. So I guess this image placeholder was not perfectly aligned to the left side of the slide. Let's jump to the slide master and let's see if we can fix this picture placeholder. Let's just drag this uh, left edge. Let's align it with the left edge of the slide. Now let's reapply this slide number two layout and let's check out this slide on the full screen once again. And the white line is gone. So I would say that the image placeholder alignment could be a little bit better. And then the slides would be super awesome. All right, so let's test out image placeholders and this slide as well. We can select two photos at the same time and let's drag them and drop them. Okay, let's check them out on the full screen. And here I can see a small white line between the photos. Maybe it was a creative choice or maybe it was a little bit of misalignment. So again, I would say that more precision with the image placeholder alignment would make this uh, PowerPoint template even better. Now let's check if this template has any animations. We can open up the animation pane and as we can see the animation pane stays empty which means there are no animations and with animations I think this template could be better. Now let's see how easy it is to change the colors of this PowerPoint template. Let's say you have your own brand colors and if you would like to change the colors you would have to go to design colors and let's go to customize colors. And for this template, we would have to adjust the accent one color. Now it's set to blue. That's why the whole presentation is blue. And now let's go to more colors. And here you can input your own RGB values or the hex code. And let's use this pink color just for testing. And as you can see, all of the slides have adapted to new color. So I would say that's good. It's really easy to change the color. However, here at the bottom, I see some of the slides are still blue. And let's go to slide master view and see what's happening. I think the reason for that is that there are two slide masters. So here we have one slide master and here we have a second slide master. So I would suggest having only one slide master. This way we would have to change the colors in one place and all of the slides would automatically change. All right, so let me undo and let's get back to this blue color. Now let's get back to testing icons once again. I remember that in some of the slides we had these question marks, so let's see what is the issue. So here we have a text box and the font is set to Font Awesome. In the template manual I see that we have to download the Font Awesome. And this is what I did, I have downloaded the latest Font Awesome number 5, but still PowerPoint does not recognize this text box. However, if I manually choose this latest Font Awesome number 5, then this text box updates. So definitely this template would be better if all of the text boxes would be updated to the latest font awesome font so that the user won't have to do it manually. All right, so we still have a couple of these PPTX files left that we still haven't checked out. So let's continue with infographics presentation. And here we have 81 slides. Let's jump to slide sort of view and let's quickly scroll down. It's always nice to have some infographics. So that's a plus for this template. And I wonder what would happen if we would grab one of these infographic slides and paste into the corporate presentation. So let's do just that. So here's the infographic slide. I see that the shapes have uh, adapted to the color palette used by corporate slides. So that's good. But still the slide design of this infographic slide is a little bit different from the rest of these corporate slides. And another thing I have noticed is that the slide number at the bottom right corner is just a simple text box. If we would duplicate this slide, this slide number still says uh, 0.1. So this is just a simple text box. We can uh, try another slide from the infographics presentation. Let's copy the slide number 5. Let's paste it right here and it should say slide number 3. But it shows us that this slide is number 5, which is wrong because it's slide number 3. So this template would be much better if the slide numbers were set the correct way and I'll show you how to do that a little bit later on. And now let's check out the rest of these uh, presentation files. So here we have a pitch deck presentation, 40 slides, that's good. 
So the slide design looks pretty much similar to the corporate slides, so that's good. And the last one is the proposal a presentation with 40 slides as well. I see some question marks here as well, so these are probably text boxes that need to be updated to the latest font awesome font. And in some of the slides we have vector icons, so I guess using vector icons is a better option. So let's get back to corporate uh, presentation and let's try to insert those slide numbers. And as you can see, if we try to insert slide numbers right now, nothing happens because we have to set those slide numbers in the slide master view. Okay, so let's jump to the slide master and let's click on this button, master layout, and now let's choose slide number. Let's click OK. And PowerPoint creates a slide number box here at the bottom. That's awesome. Now we can add any font and any font size to the slide number box that we want. And now we will have to copy the slide number box to all of the slide layouts where we would like to have slide numbers. Alright, and now let's get back to the normal view. And now we can go to our first slide or let's go to our second slide. And now let's go to insert, choose slide number. Let's select slide number. As you can see we have this little black box and let's choose apply to all. Now we have slide numbers. Let's check it out on the full screen. So slide number 2 is number 2. And for slide number three, we have number three. And for slide number four, it's empty because we haven't added the slide number box in the slide master view. But let's continue now with the logos. Let's say we'd like to add a PowerPoint logo into all of the slides. So let's see how easy it is to do that. One way to insert your company logo into all of the slides would be just copy and pasting manually. But that takes a lot of time so we can cut the logo jump to a slide master view and then we have to select the slide master this top level slide and paste the logo inside of the slide master what happens on the slide master will be visible on all of the slide layouts that's why it's a good place to insert your company logo and now let's check how our logo works with this template i can see that in some of the slides our logo is behind some of the text boxes or some of the slide elements so I would say that this template could be better if it would have a dedicated place for a company logo. Alright ladies and gentlemen, that was it for today's video. And here is a summary of what's awesome about this template and what could be better. So hopefully you will find this video useful if you're planning to purchase this template. And if you're a PowerPoint template creator, hopefully this video will help you make even more amazing PowerPoint templates. So thank you for watching everyone, stay happy, stay healthy, and I'll see you on my next video.